Hey, Nehemiah. Hey, saints. Uh, we're about to um, record today's word, and um, I won't be looking dead at you, Nehemiah, because I'm going to be talking and looking elsewhere. Um, the, today, the, the key word, and like we always say, the name of our ministry is what? Keys to the kingdom. No show of hands out in the audience. Y'all didn't know that answer. Um, keys to the kingdom. Um, today's word is going to be wait. W H I T. Wait. And I want to clue you in on something that, again, is a key, key of life. Uh, that you can always use and tell to your grandchildren and their children, so your great-grands as well. And if you live long enough, your great-great-grands. But you can tell them all that this is a key to your life, and it, it is something that you need to know, you need to put it in your mind. Your mind operates, and you operate by information that you have, and that helps you to do exceedingly in life that information that's why God one of his keys to us is the Bible and what is the Bible but information and stories about God we need information in order to perform in order to uh, exceed or succeed in life so this key is the name of the word would be weight but the key is uh, kind of put break it up in two parts. One is emotions. The other is anger. With I think it being one of the strongest emotions that we have, anger. But emotions slash anger perpetuates poverty. It keeps it going. Poverty is the lack of advancement. When you're poor, of course, we think of poverty as people that don't have food to eat. That's one of the most extreme levels of poverty. But poverty is also staying in the, st in the same state over and over and over again for years. I'll say this and I might get rebuttal on it, but in America, I'm sorry about that. African Americans are stuck in poverty. They tend to think of us as second class citizens. They tend to think of us as um, an unsuccessful group, which is not true. There are a lot of successful African Americans, but we as a people as a whole, uh, probably way back as far as being, in, if we were in a race. But the thing that keeps us there is emotions. A lot of times anger keeps us there. In a wet in a in a in a marriage, I said a wedding, I start to say a wedding, but in a marriage, we we hear a lot about people breaking up their marriage, divorce. And that would be an unsuccessful marriage. It ended. They stopped. Why did they stop? Most often because of emotions or anger. It keeps the marriage in a stuck and bondage state in a 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 place where they cannot find success, can't find it, can't get to it. Why? Because it's going in a circle. And emotions or anger is ruling in their lives. You will find, if you think about it, this is not new to you, but it's being brought to you. 
Amen. It's not new to you, but it's being brought to you again to have you to examine it, take a closer look at it. You, you'll find that when emotions rule, when anger rules, then you tend to dismiss a lot of things. Sacrifice is what you'll need in order to advance. In a marriage, I often told mama years ago, I said, when I get angry, don't you get angry too. Because then we don't go anywhere. We're just matching ugliness. If I get ugly, then you get ugly. We'll just match ugliness. We won't go anywhere. We won't get anywhere. We won't escape, escape what it is I'm in. So then anger and emotions are basically a prison of your mind. When you get stuck there, you need to be let free. You need to be set free. I'm, excuse me, one second. Can, oh, we can, yeah, we can pause. Cool. Hey, we had pause. That's cool. Hopefully, it's not too long to put on YouTube or we'll be back at square one. Again, um, anger and emotions put you in a prison. And don't allow you to advance or succeed. Um, there are certain kinds of prisons that stop you from advancing. When we talked about Elijah last week, we talked about basketball and him being able to miss several shots and still keep going and pay it no never mind and 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 begin to be successful as a shooter because in the beginning. Though those missed shots didn't keep him in that prison. He wasn't bound by uh, uh, disappointment. He wasn't bound by um, what others might say or think about him. And so missing shots didn't stop him from becoming a shooter. And so, therefore, he was not in a prison. And like we said last week, most kids are in that prison. Once they miss so many shots, they don't shoot no more. And they figure, I'm not a shooter. And so they stay bound in that poverty, if you will, in that state of, of, of un, not being able to advance where Elijah was set free and went on to become a really good shooter. And though, might not know it, but I spoke to Nehemiah years ago and I was like, you, you're unusual. I said, all my kids can shoot. And you can't shoot at all. Nehemiah could not shoot at all. He was a terrible shooter. Oh, he was the worst of all the children. The very worst. And this was, this was um, before high school, I believe. It was before high school. And he was awful because I was trying to do training camps to teach kids shooting and skills and stuff. And Nehemiah was the worst shooter in the bunch. Just horrible. I mean, he was terrible. I was like, this don't even make sense. I, even Letha can shoot. You know, it's just, Crowders can shoot the ball. That's that's one thing we can do. And he was terrible. But he practiced that summer. And then next thing you know, he was one of the best shooters in the family. Because I thought that was unusual for him not to be able to shoot. So, but anyway, him not being able to do something did not put him in a prison. He kept doing. He wasn't bound by anger. He wasn't bound by emotions. And he succeeded. African Americans, a lot of time, this is the key to your life, are bound by emotions, bound by anger. Watch. If roots come on today, we will go to work and won't be able to stand white people. If you got a job, you think, you know, these people perpetuated slavery. And you'll be angry at people that were not born back in slavery time, didn't have any slaves, but because they look like them people that was in the movie, you'll be angry at them. We're bound by emotions and anger instead of being free through information and sacrifice. 
and again, the name of the sermon is wait, we're going to get there. But the, 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 the subtitle would be emotions and anger. Again, I was talking about, and I probably lost my thought, so stay with me as we go in this big circle and we get in this soup. We're going to touch different things, but it's all there in there together, and it's going to be up to you to pull it together so you can understand it. Um, but as I was talking about my wife, I said, don't you get angry when I get angry because we don't get anywhere. We don't grow. It's very important that you move, pay attention to all that I'm saying today. I told you it's a soup. But it's important that you move and you grow. You move and you grow. Daily, continually, moving and growing. When you stand still in, in sadness and sorrow and things are not going your way, you're probably in a prison of emotions. You're in a prison of emotions, you're in a prison of anger. Sadness and sorrow. Emotions. You get stuck. Mama, mama told me, or said, I saw her yesterday, and she told me this morning, um, I'm having a, a moment. I'm having a moment. She reached way back and began to think on her sister, Peach. And she was having a moment. Feeling the loss of Peach, her sister, and she had a moment. She, didn't have, she had more than a moment. It took more than a moment for her to go through that. And you can, oftentimes we don't find anything wrong with our prisons because we've been in there for so long. Mm -hmm. And you'll hear African Americans talk about some of the things that they shouldn't no longer talk about. And not referring to Linda's moment with Pete, she had a, a sorrowful moment remembering her sister. But um, it, may, it stops you, yeah. keeps you from uh, 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 being somewhat productive, being lost in that emotion. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it stops everything around you and you begin to concentrate on that emotion. That's a, that's a, 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 a prison. You're locked in for a moment, can't get out, and you don't even want anybody to get you out. And that's another story when sometime we're in, locked in, in prison in these moments you don't know want nobody to get you out and again with the emotion like I said with my wife I said you don't need to be angry when I'm angry we don't get anywhere and I had to begin to teach her if I'm off in this tan tantrum or, or in this state of mind you're my wife I'm depending on you to bring me out of it not to match my height of confusion, not to match my height of this emotion, whether it be anger or sadness or sorrow. Don't match it. Don't challenge it. But bring me out. If I'm in jail and you come to jail and say, how in the heck did you get in there? What did you do? I'm in jail, okay? Don't come down there embarrassing me. Come down there with some money and come down there being against whomever put me in there. Or at least, how you say, uh, uh, congenial enough to make a difference, to set me free. Don't come down there and say, what y'all got him for? He need to be in here. They'll be like, ma'am, can you come to the front? They don't even want to hear that. <laughs> but that's what you perpetuate in your daily life. With your spouse, a lot of times, you match the emotion, match the anger, challenge the emotion, challenge the anger, instead of getting free from it. Somebody needs to be set free when you find them locked in an emotion. I used to battle with Michaelin. Oh, my gosh. She used to go through emotional uh, uh, turmoil. It's a good word. Boy, when she went down... Oh, my God. Didn't want to be free. Shut the door and just act a complete terrible person. And a lot of times so bad that I match or challenge the emotion instead of making a sacrifice. 
humbling myself and looking for the Lord and the words of God to help me to deliver that person. And that's what we want to talk about today is how we get delivered out of those perpetual emotions, out of those places of anger that keeps us from growing, keeps us from moving and advancing. I, I heard some black guys the other day, or a black guy, and um, I, I, I'm losing my thought. Forget what he said, but I thought, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't say that, you know, about us. You shouldn't. Uh, what, what we talked about earlier, the prison, a lot of times black people continue to perpetuate some of the things that hold us back and wonder why we're not making advances. We talk about each other real bad. You know, you know, they're going to be late. With they on CP time. And they just perpetuate these foolish emotions. They're looking for uh, 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 failure in us. They're looking, they're perpetuating failure in us. That's locked in a prison. That's locked in an emotion. You react the same way to those things. And we continue to perpetuate our situation because of emotions or anger. The key to the, today's word is wait. A lot of times when people are locked in a prison, the biggest thing that they do and should not do is they don't make the sacrifice they don't make the fight to be released. They don't make the sacrifice or the fight to be released. Mm -hmm. Husband and wives are the biggest proponents, if you will, if that's the correct word, or the biggest examples of being locked in emotions, locked in prison, and locked in anger as they challenge one another when they see an emotion arise. Anger being one of the biggest. If I'm anger, angry, my wife will become angry. She'll see me come in the house sometime, and I'll, when I come in, if I'm getting off work, and she's learned this over the years, I don't want to come in to you know, a bedroom full of people. I'm getting off work. I want to get out of my clothes. It's a bedroom full of people. My bedroom's all messed up. And I'm like, why, why is this here? And she'll say to me, don't come in here with that attitude. And so that's not what I need. She's challenging. I'm already coming in tired, irritated. And then she begins to challenge that emotion. Don't come in here with that. Just use kind word, wrong attitude, wrong choice of that key to let me out of that prison. What should happen is, okay, you guys, let's get out. Hey, honey, how you doing? Oh, how, how was your day? Let me get this cleaned up. She's got to sacrifice to take low. She might not want to because this big monster coming here. We've been having a great day. You don't come in here with that mess. We use the wrong... Uh, 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 keys or the wrong steps or the wrong uh, uh, solutions to be made free from us being in prison by emotions. And again, when you're locked in emotions, you can't advance. It perpetuates. The problem, watch this. If I come in and I'll be like, what the heck is going on in the screen room? Like I could do. How many people are going to go through that screen room and not pick up those leaf bags? They, they blew off four days ago. The wind came in there and tossed around the leaf bag. Now 50 times, 60 times, somebody has walked through that screen room and walked right past those leaf bags. Even Michaelin, while she's sick, she's walked past those leaf bags. Everybody looked at them like, not my job. Now, I could come in and come in here and say, 
Why in the world haven't any of you lazy so-and-sos picked up them leaf bags? And most within the earshot of that will take challenge to it. Why are you coming in here with that attitude? Man, always angry. Good gosh. I'll get the doggone leaf bags. What have we done? I'm in jail. Downtown Oakland County. And you guys have come downtown and asked the police officers to let you in the jail as well. Does that make any sense? Which one of you would actually do that? If they lock me up, send me to Jackson. That's one of the dreadful prisons of, of our area within a hundred and some miles. Jackson prison. When you go to Jackson, boy, you've done, done something. Now they take me to Jackson. And you come down there and say, you know what? Put me in prison too. Who does that? Nobody, Nobody does that. I'll give you a better example. If one of your friends get in trouble, he just drop you off at the house, then he goes off and he's driving and somebody wreck his car, he get out and beat him to a pulp. Then the police come knocking at your door. Were you with John yesterday? You're like, yeah. Well, we need to bring you down for questioning. We're going to put you in jail. He's in jail. He just uh, brutally assaulted this man and his wife. And we need to bring you down for questioning. And um, he said you was with him, and we're going to put you in jail. And you'll be like, somebody's going to have to tell the truth, because I don't care who John is. I'm not finna do five to ten for no aggravated assault. Or oh, however many years you get, you probably only get one to two. might even get six months. But most of us are not willing to do six months for something we didn't do. Right? Hey, man, are you still with me? We're not going to join them in 